Iran Air Flight 655 is an Iran Air civilian passenger flight from Tehran to Dubai. On 3 July 1988, the aircraft operating on this route was shot down by the United States Navy-guided missile cruiser US Van Sens under the command of William C. Rogers III. The incident took place in Iranian airspace, over Iran's territorial waters in the Persian Gulf, and on the flight's usual flight path. The aircraft, an Airbus A300 B2-203, was destroyed by SM-2 MR surface-to-air missiles fired from Vincennes. All 290 on board died. The cruiser Vincennes had entered Iranian territorial waters after one of its helicopters drew warning fire from Iranian speedboats operating within Iranian territorial limits. According to the United States government, the crew incorrectly identified the Iranian Airbus A300 as an attacking F-14A Tomcat fighter, a plane made in the United States and operated at that time by only two forces worldwide, the United States Navy and the Islamic Republic of Iran Air Force. While the Iranian F-14S had been supplied by manufacturer Grumman in an air-to-air -air configuration only in the 1970s, the crew of Vincennes had been briefed when entering the region that the Iranian F-14S carried unguided bombs as well as Maverick missiles in unguided rockets. The Vincennes crew made 10 attempts to contact the crew of the flight on military and civilian radio frequencies but received no response. The International Civil Aviation Organization said that the flight crew should have been monitoring the civilian frequency. According to the Iranian government, Van Sens negligently shot down the civilian aircraft. The airliner was making IFF squawks in Mode 3, a signal that identified it as a civilian craft. The event generated a great deal of criticism of the United States amongst those who were able to learn of it. Some analysts blamed the captain of Vincennes, who had entered Iran's waters, for reckless and aggressive behavior in a tense and dangerous environment. The United States government did not formally apologize to Iran. In 1996, the United States and Iran reached a settlement at the International Court of Justice which included the statement, the United States recognized. The aerial incident of 3 July 1988 is a terrible human tragedy and expressed deep regret over the loss of lives caused by the incident. As part of the settlement, the United States did not admit legal liability but agreed to pay on an ex gratia basis $61.8 million amounting to $213,103.45 per passenger, in compensation to the families of the Iranian victims. Iran Air continues to use flight number 655 on the Tehran to Dubai route as a memorial to the victims. This event ranks eighth among the deadliest disasters in aviation history. The incident retains the highest death toll of any aviation incident in the Persian Gulf. Background In 1984 the war between Iraq and Iran had expanded to include air attacks against oil tankers and merchant shipping of neighboring countries some of whom were providing aid to Iraq by shipping Iraqi oil. The Flight 655 incident occurred a year after the Iraqi Air Force attack on the U.S. Navy-guided missile frigate Tus Stark on 17 May 1987, which killed 37 American sailors. U.S. Naval forces had also exchanged gunfire with Iranian gunboats in late 1987, and the U.S. Navy-guided missile frigate Tus Samuel B. Roberts had struck an Iranian sea mine in April 1988. Two months before the incident the U.S. had engaged in Operation Praying Mantis, resulting in the sinking of the Iranian frigate Sahand. Tensions were therefore high in the Strait of Hormuz at the time of the incident with Flight 655. On 29 April 1988 the U.S. expanded the scope of its Navy's protection to all friendly neutral shipping in the Persian Gulf outside declared exclusion zones setting the stage for the shoot-down incident. 
At about the same time, US Van Sens was rushed to the area on a short notice deployment, as a result of high level decisions to compensate for the lack of AWACS coverage, which was hampering US monitoring of the southern Persian Gulf. Vincennes, fitted with the then new Aegis combat system and under the command of Captain William C. Rogers III, departed San Diego on 25 April 1988 and arrived in Bahrain on 29 May 1988, as the Strait of Hormuz at its narrowest is just 21 nautical miles wide, in order to traverse the strait. Ships must stay within sea lanes that pass through the territorial waters of Iran and Oman under the transit passage provisions of customary law of the sea. It is therefore normal for ships, including warships, entering or leaving the Persian Gulf to transit Iranian territorial waters. During the Iran-Iraq War the Iranian forces frequently boarded and inspected neutral cargo ships in the Strait of Hormuz in search of contraband destined for Iraq. While legal under international law, these inspections added to the tensions in the area. Shooting down of Flight 655, the plane, an Airbus A300B2, flown by Captain Mosen Rez Ayan, 37, a veteran pilot with 7,000 hours of flight time, left Bandar Abbas at 10.17 a.m. Iran time, 27 minutes after its scheduled departure time. It should have been a 28-minute flight. After takeoff, it was directed by the Bandar Abbas Tower to turn on its transponder and proceed over the Persian Gulf. The flight was assigned routinely to Commercial Air Corridor Amber 59, a 20-mile wide lane on a direct line to Dubai Airport. The short distance made for a simple flight pattern. Climb to 14,000 feet, cruise for a short time, and descend into Dubai. The airliner was transmitting the correct transponder, squawk, code typical of a civilian aircraft and maintained radio contact in English with appropriate air traffic control facilities. On the morning of 3 July, Vincennes was passing through the Strait of Hormuz returning from an escort duty. A helicopter from US Vincennes reported that it received small arms fire from Iranian patrol vessels as it observed from high altitude. The cruiser moved to engage the Iranian vessels, in the course of which they all violated Omani waters and left after being challenged in order to leave by a Royal Navy of Oman warship. Vincennes then pursued the Iranian gunboats, entering Iranian territorial waters to open fire. Us sides and us Elma Montgomery were nearby. Thus, us Vincennes was in Iranian territorial waters at the time of the incident. As admitted by the U.S. government in legal briefs and publicly by Admiral William Crow on Nightline, Admiral Crow denied a U.S government cover-up of the incident and claimed that Vincennes' helicopter was over international waters initially, when it was first fired upon by the Iranian gunboats. Contrary to the accounts of various US Vincennes crew members, the shipboard Aegis combat system aboard Vincennes recorded that the Iranian airliner was climbing at the time and its radio transmitter was squawking on the Mode 3 civilian code only rather than on military mode 2. After receiving no response to multiple radio challenges, US Vincennes fired two surface-to-air missiles at the airliner. One of the missiles hit the airliner, which exploded and fell in fragments into the water. Everyone on board was killed. The event triggered an intense international controversy, with Iran condemning the US attack. In mid-July 1988, Iranian Foreign Minister Ali Akbar Velayati asked the United Nations Security Council to condemn the United States saying the U.S. attack could not have been a mistake and was a criminal act and atrocity and a massacre. George H. W. Bush, at the time Vice President of the United States in the Reagan administration, defended his country at the United Nations by arguing that the U.S. attack had been a wartime incident and that the crew of Vincennes had acted appropriately to the situation. The Soviet Union asked the U.S. 
to withdraw from the area and supported efforts by the Security Council to end the Iran-Iraq war. Most of the remainder of the 13 delegates who spoke supported the U.S. position, saying one of the problems was that a 1987 resolution to end the Iran-Iraq war had been ignored. Following the debate, Security Council Resolution 616 was passed expressing deep distress over the U.S. attack, profound regret for the loss of human lives, and stressed the need to end the Iran-Iraq war as resolved in 1987. Nationalities of the victims according to the documents submitted to the International Court of Justice by Iran. The aircraft was carrying 290 people. 274 passengers and a crew of 16. Of these 290, 254 were Iranian, 13 were Emeritus, 10 were Indians, 6 were Pakistanis, 6 were Yugoslavs and 1 was an Italian. U.S. Government accounts according to the U.S. Government, Van Sens mistakenly identified the Iranian airliner as an attacking military fighter. The officers misidentified the flight profile being flown by the Airbus A300B2 as being similar to that of an F-148A Tomcat during an attack run. However, the ship's own Aegis combat system recorded the flight plan of the Iranian airliner as climbing at the time of the incident. The commercial flight had originated at Bandar Abbas, which served dual roles as a base for Iranian F-14 operations and is a hub for commercial civilian flights. According to the same reports, Vincennes tried unsuccessfully to contact the approaching aircraft seven times on the military emergency frequency and three times on the civilian emergency frequency, but never on air traffic control frequencies. This civilian aircraft was not equipped to pick up military frequencies and the messages on the civilian emergency channel could have been directed at any aircraft. More confusion arose as the hail speed was the ground speed, while the pilot's instruments displayed air speed, which was 50 knot different. At 10.24 a.m., with the civilian jet 11 nautical miles away, Van Sens fired two SM-2MR surface-to-air missiles, one of which hit the airliner. After the attack, the Vincennes crew realized that the plane had been a civilian airliner. This version was finalized in a report by Admiral William Fogarty, entitled Formal Investigation into the Circumstances Surrounding the Downing of Iran Air Flight 655 on 3 July 1988. Only parts of this report have been released. The Fogarty report stated, The data from us Van Sen's tapes, information from us size and reliable intelligence information, corroborate the fact that Iran Air Flight 655 was on a normal commercial air flight plan profile in the assigned airway, squawking mode 36760. On a continuous ascent in altitude from takeoff at Bandar Abbas to shoot down. When questioned in a 2000 BBC documentary, the US government stated in a written answer that they believed the incident may have been caused by a simultaneous psychological condition amongst the 18 bridge crew of Vincennes called scenario fulfillment which is said to occur when persons are under pressure. In such a situation, the men will carry out a training scenario, believing it to be reality while ignoring sensory information that contradicts the scenario. In the case of this incident, the scenario was an attack by a lone military aircraft. Iranian government account according to the Iranian government. The shooting down of IR-655 by Vincennes was an intentionally performed and unlawful act, even if there was a mistaken identification, which Iran has not accepted. It argues that this constituted gross negligence and recklessness amounting to an international crime, not an accident. In particular, Iran expressed skepticism about claims of misidentification, noting that Van Sens had advanced Aegis radar that correctly tracked the flight and its mode 3 beacon. Two other U.S. 
warships in the area, Sides and Montgomery, identified the aircraft as civilian, and the flight was well within a recognized international air corridor. It also noted that the crew of Vincennes was trained to handle simultaneous attacks by hundreds of enemy aircraft. Iran found it more plausible that Vincennes hankered for an opportunity to show its stuff. According to Iran, the U.S. had previously issued a notice to airmen warning aircraft that they were at risk of defensive measures if they had not been cleared from a regional airport and if they came within five nautical miles of a warship at an altitude of less than 2,000 feet. IR-655 had been cleared from a regional airport and was well outside those limits when it was attacked. Even if the plane had been an Iranian F-14, Iran argued that the U.S. would not have had the right to shoot it down, as it was flying within Iranian airspace and did not follow a path that could be considered an attack profile, nor did it illuminate Vincennes with radar. Prior to the incident, Vincennes had entered Iranian territorial waters, and was inside Iranian territorial waters when it launched its missiles. Even if the crew of IR-655 had made mistakes, the U.S. government remained responsible for the actions of the crew of Vincennes under international law. Iran pointed out that in the past, the United States has steadfastly condemned the shooting down of aircraft, whether civil or military by the armed forces of another state, and cited El Al Flight 402, Libyan Arab Airlines Flight 114 and Korean Airlines Flight 007, among other incidents. Iran also noted that when Iraq attacked us Stark, United States found Iraq fully responsible on the grounds that the Iraqi pilot knew or should have known that he was attacking a U.S. warship. Independent Sources National Geographic Channel broadcast a documentary on this incident titled Mistaken Identity as an episode of its May Day series. The documentary confirmed that the airliner was transmitting an identification friend or foe code for a civilian aircraft. But Captain William C. Rogers III in an interview insisted that he believed the code alone did not mean the aircraft was non-hostile. Captain Rogers described the attack as a self-defense measure to save his ship and the lives of the crew. John Barry and Roger Charles of Newsweek wrote in their 13 July 1992 article that Rogers acted recklessly and without due care. However, a subsequent U.S. report by Rear Admiral William Fogarty, titled Formal Investigation into the Circumstances Surrounding the Downing of Iran Air Flight 655 on July 3, 1988 concluded that Rogers acted in a prudent manner based on the information available to him and the short time frame involved. He also acted within the prescribed rules of engagement for USN warship captains in that situation. They also accused the U.S. government of a cover-up, but Admiral Crow denied any knowledge. An analysis of the events by the International Strategic Studies Association described the deployment of an Aegis cruiser in the zone as irresponsible and felt that the value placed on Aegis cruisers by the U.S. Navy had played a major part in the setting of a low threshold for opening fire. Vincennes had been nicknamed Robur Cruiser by crew members and other U.S. Navy ships, both in reference to its Aegis system and to the supposed aggressive tendencies of its captain. The International Court of Justice case relating to the Airbus attack, the aerial incident of July 3, 1988 was dropped on the 22nd of February 1996 following settlement and reparations by the United States. Three years after the incident, Admiral William J. Crow admitted on American television show Nightline that Vincennes was inside Iranian territorial waters when it launched the missiles. This contradicted earlier Navy statements. The International Civil Aviation Organization report of December 1988 placed the US Vincennes well inside Iran's territorial waters. Commander David Carlson, commanding officer of US sides, the warship stationed nearest to Vincennes at the time of the incident, 
is reported to have said that the destruction of the aircraft marks the horrifying climax to Captain Rogers's aggressiveness. First seen four weeks ago, his comment referred to incidents on 2 June, when Rogers had sailed Vincennes too close to an Iranian frigate undertaking a lawful search of a bull carrier, launched a helicopter within two to three miles of an Iranian small craft despite rules of engagement requiring a four-mile separation, and opened fire on small Iranian military boats. Of those incidents, Carlson commented, Why do you want an Aegis cruiser out there shooting at boats? It wasn't a smart thing to do. He also said that Iranian forces he had encountered in the area a month prior to the incident were pointedly non-threatening and professional. At the time of Rogers's announcement to higher command that he was going to shoot down the plane, Carlson is reported to have been thunderstruck. I said to folks around me, why, what the hell is he doing? I went through the drill again. F-14. He's climbing. By now this damn thing is at 7,000 feet. Carlson thought Van Sens might have more information, and was unaware that Rogers had been wrongly informed that the plane was diving. Carlson is also reported to have written in the U.S. naval proceedings that he had wondered aloud in disbelief on hearing of Vincent's intentions, speculating that the ship, known as Robocruiser, for its aggressiveness, felt a need to prove the viability of Aegis in the Persian Gulf and that they hankered for the opportunity to show their stuff, Craig, Morales and Oliver. In a slide presentation published in MIT's Spring 2004 Aeronautics and Astronautics as the Us Van Sens incident, commented that Captain Rogers had an undeniable and unequivocal tendency towards what I call picking a fight on his own initiative. Rogers moved Van Sens 50 miles northeast to join us Montgomery. An angry Captain Richard McKenna, Chief of Surface Warfare for the Commander of the Joint Task Force, ordered Rogers back to Abu Musa, but Van Sen's helicopter pilot, LT, Mark Collier, followed the Iranian speedboats as they retreated north, eventually taking some fire. Dr. Vincennes jumps back into the fray, heading towards the majority of the speedboats. He is unable to get a clear target. Also, the speedboats are now just slowly milling about in their own territorial waters. Despite clear information to the contrary, Rogers informs command that the gunboats are gathering speed and showing hostile intent and gains approval to fire upon them at 0939. Finally, in another fateful decision, he crosses the 12 nautical mile limit off the coast and enters illegally into Iranian waters.